Welcome to another one of Carinado's product videos. Today we'll be looking at the Cessna 182 Turbo with G1000. Yes, Carinado's long-awaited G1000 is finally here. This is a product that has taken years to develop, and in this video I hope to show you some of the things I think make this plane and its G1000 truly epic. First of all, it's 100% custom programmed. Now most planes for X-Plane, no matter if they're payware or freeware, make extensive use of Plane Maker's WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get, panel editor. Here, Laminar Research, the company behind X-Plane, has given developers a tool to efficiently author entire panels, glass or otherwise, with relative ease. You could even customize some of these instruments by reworking their graphics in Photoshop, assigning custom logic to them, or tweaking their configuration files. Now since the very beginning already, and in contrast to many default planes found in X-Plane, Carinado has brought planes to the X-Plane market whose analog gauges are all 3D modeled and animated. This allows for unprecedented realism, night lighting control and sharpness, and even better performance, frame per second wise, when compared to X-Plane's 2D gauge authoring technique. But for digital displays, like LCDs and LEDs, basically anything with animated textures, the easiest and most sane way to author these has been to drag a prefabricated component into PlaneMaker's panel window, and with various building blocks, layering techniques, and custom settings, one is able to create quite decent panels quite quickly due to their level of prefabrication and integration into x source code. Now the challenges for creating a highly functional G1000 for x are quite numerous, especially if from the onset the goal is to have a high resolution, completely functional pop-up version of these flight displays. This basically automatically rules out the use of PlaneMaker's prefabricated instruments. So while it would be really, really helpful to have a prefabricated EFIS display at your disposal, which has a direct pipeline into Laminar's closed source code from where it could tap into information about airports, nav aids, VORs, NDBs, etc., Making that for a pop-up capable G1000 does require the developer to start thinking about where to extract the data from as it is not always readily available for custom plug-in based instrument use. So each map element has to be derived, generated, or retrieved from elsewhere. And drawing these components on the map in their correct relative location with a correct icon and fonts is also quite tricky and can be a highly technical endeavor. Elevation data for the moving map is also extremely challenging to derive. Uh, scenery files, known as DSF files in X-Plane, do have elevation data, but extracting that data is impractical due to the processing involved, the algorithms, the storage requirements, and so forth. Now there is a way in X-Plane to probe the terrain in real time, which consists of an SDK function that basically creates a matrix of sensors around the plane where each sensor returns elevation data. So from this data, the moving map can be drawn. But the disadvantage is that it's rather inefficient, and especially for higher probe densities, it can cost some serious frames per second. But Carinado's G1000 draws its moving map in a very frames per second friendly manner by generating a temporary snapshot of the data returned by the terrain probes and treating it as a rotating and moving texture, with the added benefit of keeping the rotating map nicely synced up with the other visual elements of the moving map and minimizing movement artifacts and distortions. In fact, the real G1000 actually also has a map that rotates around in that fashion. You can tell by the fact that the pixels on the real G1000 aren't always uh, lined up up and down, left and right. And for the coastlines and waterways, more detail is required to get the edges to look crisp and clean, so that data was generated as a vector graphic from a database. This database must be downloaded as a separate zip file from the Carinado site, and it'll serve as the water and nav database for any future G1000 based Carinado plane. Speaking of nav database, the whole area of flight planning and navigation is another entire layer that had to be reauthored using only whatever is provided by X Planes SDK. So the challenges in creating a realistic, highly functional, usable, frame rate friendly, multi platform, integrated, and expandable G1000 with the pop up windows and scroll wheel support for X Plane are, well, quite daunting. This plane is a plane of many firsts, and given the fact that so many things could possibly go wrong with so many variables thrown into the mix simultaneously, things seem to be going quite well with this plane, which is really exciting as it paves the way for many awesome new Carinado and Alabeo developments in X-Plane. So first let's have a look at the Cessna 182's panel in PlaneMaker. As you can see, it's conspicuously vacant 
void of any X-plane default instruments. This means all the brains of this entire instrument suite are handled elsewhere. In this case, they're handled in SASL, which is a plugin that interprets Lua scripts for X-plane. SASL also handles the drawing of the graphical components of this instrument, both on the 3D surfaces of the cockpit's panel, as well as on the 2D pop-up windows. So SASL pulls all the navigation, elevation, engine, atmosphere, and et cetera data from a combination of different sources, processes all that data, optimizes it, and then displays it on the 2D and 3D panels. So yeah, you can get an idea of the sheer amount of scripts and logic building blocks required to program this beast simply by watching the log.txt file populate as the plane loads up in X-plane. And it does take a little while to load up. Think of X-Plane startup procedure. Many of the things that X-Plane loads for its internal use have to be reloaded for the G1000's use simply because they've been reprogrammed in the plugin environment and because there's limited access to those X-Plane items that are loaded along with the sim. But once it's all loaded, the fun can really begin. It's not within the scope of this video to showcase all the functionalities of the G1000, but here's a few items of note. There's a moving map in north up and heading up modes on the MFD. There's topo and terrain modes for the map. There's different declutter levels, crisp water borders, as mentioned, derived from the vector database, checklists for normal and emergency procedures, engine displays, different pages, map, waypoint, auxiliary, flight plan, nearest, as well as their respective sub pages, and the ability to generate, save, load, activate, invert, and delete flight plans. And then over to the PFD. There's the radio tuners, the transponder and ID, a list of nearest airports, wind data, DME, BRG1 and BRG2, timer and references, course and heading knobs, both with the ability to sync them via knob push, PFD inset map with declutter levels, and of course, all the standard flight instruments. But looking beyond the actual G1000, we've got the Super Manipulator, which is Carinado's response to X-Plane's lack of native scroll wheel support, combining the use of single click or click hold on the left or right side of each knob to decrease or to increase the value respectively. There's the ability to click and drag vertically for course changes and click and drag horizontally for fine-tuned changes, and of course there's scroll wheel support, which in fact can be disabled by unchecking the plugin from X-Plane's plugin menu. And just as an extra little help, the knobs will light up to indicate which knob you're about to adjust with the mouse via whatever method you find most comfortable. This visual aid can also be turned off via the options pop-up menu. So the night lighting is also quite flexible and realistic looking, and even the dynamic reflections on the G1000 screens respond to the lighting conditions. And thanks to X-Plane's flight dynamics, of course, this plane handles like a dream, and it's a beauty to fly it. And as usual, you have full 3D sounds with neat effects like four separate interior engine recordings for different RPM levels and eight different tracks for exterior sounds, so that as you come around behind the plane with the camera, the sound is more muffled and windy. Then when you open the windows or doors, external sounds come into the cockpit in true 3D stereo fashion. The prop too, besides being all multi-layered for different speeds and volumetric when viewed from the side, and having a visible white stripe around the circumference when viewed from the front, but not from the back or inside the cockpit, has a new trick up its sleeves. When the light is just right, you can see you can actually see shimmering reflection of sunlight on the prop. That's a neat new touch for a Carinado plane and X-Plane. So with this aircraft, Carinado is really pushing for new heights of possibilities in X-Plane, and we think this is going to be a start of something really fantastic for the X-Plane add-on world. Uh, so to get this plane, just go to any one of your favorite X-Plane add-on stores. Thank you for your support in helping Carinado continue to bring awesome planes to X-Plane.